All right, let's take a look at question 19. It reads, to solve um, the equation 2x over x minus 2 minus 11 over x equals 8 over x squared minus 2x, run multiply both sides of the um, by the least common denominator. Which statement is true? Okay, so um, we're having statements concerning um, the solutions. Um, some being extraneous, um, or the the scenario where um, none of the solutions are extraneous. So since this problem is presenting options concerning the solution, what does that tell us? It tells us that we have to solve the equation completely and test the solutions that we get to see if they're um, actually viable solutions or if they're extraneous solutions. Okay. So before we get started uh, with the problem solving process, let's go ahead and refresh our memory on what it means for a solution to be extraneous. Um, extraneous solutions do what? Extraneous solutions do not satisfy the original equation. Okay, so what does that tell you? Whenever you're solving rational equations, um, you always want to check your answers and eliminate um, extraneous solutions. Okay, all right, so let's go ahead and solve this equation and then we will test our answers to see which ones are actual solutions and which are extraneous. 2x over x minus 2 minus 11 over x equals 8 over x squared minus 2x. All right, so first things first, we want to eliminate the denominator. Okay, to eliminate the denominator, we're going to multiply by the LCD. That's what Ren did. Um, so to find the LCD of the denominators, we want to factor completely. That really facilitates the process. So we have 2x over x minus 2 is prime, cannot be factored further minus 11 over x, that's prime also, 8 over x squared minus 2x, you can factor out an x, so you have x minus 2. All right, so it's nicely factored, so the question is, what is the LCD of the denominator factors, which are x and x minus 2? The LCD is simply the product, since they're co-prime, x times x minus 2. Now, what does this help us accomplish? Um, if we multiply both sides of this equation by the LCD, these denominators go into the LCD evenly. So that means that all the denominators will become one. All right. So that's much easier than dealing with this situation here because it will no longer be a rational equation. It will become a polynomial equation, in this case, a quadratic. So let's multiply by the LCD to um, get rid of the denominator term. So we have x times x minus 2. Both sides of the equation must be multiplied by exactly the same thing or else you are changing the problem. Okay, so times x times x minus 2. Okay, now if you take a look at the first one, the x minus 2's divide out nicely. In the second one, the x's divide out. And in the third one, the x minus 2's and the x's divide out. So what you're left with is just 1's in the denominator. When you multiply a numerator, you will have 2x times x, which is 2x squared, minus 11 times x minus 2. Now you want to be careful here. There's a minus here. Don't forget to distribute that minus to this minus here. So it becomes 11x plus 2. That's a common mistake uh, most students make. They forget to distribute the minus in front. Okay, equals, and then here is just 8. So as indicated earlier, we now have a quadratic equation, which is much easier to um, handle compared to a uh, rational equation. Okay, 11 times 2 is 22, not 2. All right, so, okay, now let's go ahead and uh, put it in standard form. To accomplish that, we will subtract 8 from both sides 
Why are we doing that? We want to make it equal to 0. Okay, so we have 2x squared minus 11x plus 14. Now let's go ahead and solve this quadratic equation. It's very likely that we can factor it because our options provided were all rational, so we shouldn't have a problem factoring this. So we're going to put AC on the top and B on the bottom. AC is 28, B is negative 11. So we'll play the X game, okay? The question is, what two numbers multiply to give you 28 and add to give you negative 11? So you exhaust all the numbers that multiply to give you 28, okay? So if you do it correctly, you end up with um, negative 7 and negative 4. These two numbers multiply to give you that and they add to give you negative 11. So we're going to insert them into our polynomial function. So we equation, so we have 2x squared. Uh, and then we're going to insert our two numbers that we came up with. Minus 7x minus 4x. This will enable us to factor by grouping plus 14. Alright, so we're going to partition it down the center and factor by grouping, okay? From the first two, uh, we can take out x, factor out x, and we have 2x minus 7. From the next two, we can factor out negative 2. That's a GCF for these two terms, negative 2. And we have 2x factor out minus from a plus, the sign changes to minus. Now you examine your two quantities in the parentheses. If you factor correctly, correctly, they should be the same. They are here, so we're looking good. So what we're going to do is pull out those factors in the parentheses, 2x minus 7. And then the numbers on the outside, we just group them together because that's what's left upon extraction of the GCF binomial term. Um, and then we have x minus 2 equals 0. To finish this off, we'll use the zero product property, set both factors to 0, and solve. So for this one, you just uh, add 7, 2x equals 7, and divide by 2. So the answer for the first one is 7 over 2 and then this one you just add 2 to both sides and you are in business. Now the question is are these the solutions to our rational uh, expression to the original rational expression? The answer is no. These are potential solutions. Okay. How do we know if um, they are actual solutions or not? What we're going to do is test to see if they are extraneous or not. Okay, so this is where the test part comes in, or you can call it check, whichever way you want to express it. All right, so let's go ahead and test both of them out. We're going to start by testing out the first one. We're going to test x equals 2. How do you do that? You take your equation, plug in 2, and see if you end up with a true or a false statement. Okay, so we have. Um, 2 times 2 over 2 minus 2 minus 11 over 2 equals 8 over 2 square minus 2 times 2. The question is, is the left side equal to the right side? Let's focus on the left side first. So looking at the left side, 2 times 2 is 4 over 2 minus 2 is 0. We have a problem. 4 over 0 is undefined, okay? So that's a, a problem. So since this is undefined, that means that 2 is not a solution. This is undefined. You cannot divide by 0, okay? So we uh, write the conclusion 2 is uh, extraneous. So if 2 is extraneous, does that automatically mean that 7 over 2 is a solution? 
the answer is no we, we don't know we must test both of them because there's a possibility that they're both extraneous solutions so we're going to test uh, x equals 7 over 2 okay so we'll plug it into the equation we have 2 times 7 over 2 divided by 7 over 2 minus 2 minus 11 over 7 over 2 um, and then on the right side we have um, 8 over 7 over 2 square minus 2 times 7 over 2. Okay, as you can see, this involves a lot of work. So let's go back to the options and see, do we actually have to solve that equation? Do we have to do the second test? Let's look at the options we have here to see if we can get around that, okay? So, um, 2 is an extraneous solution. Well, that's a true statement. Bam, there goes the answer, okay? Uh, 7 over 2 is an extraneous solution. Is if... Um, these two are included together then we have to do the test all right so we already have a true statement so option one is correct if you look at option three it says zero and two zero is not even a solution right so this cannot be an answer option four this equation does not contain any extraneous solutions that's false because we have at least one we don't know about seven over two but from the look of things um seven over two might not be an extraneous solution but two is an extraneous solution we know that for sure, so our answer is option number one.